Hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the mass breeding machine which is this thing that you see right here. Now this is an automated design that's been made to use a little bit of a game exploit so that you can automatically breed animals while you're away from your computer. So I'm going to jump straight into the explanation of the bit that is kind of cheaty because Minecraft is a sandbox game. You can play it however you want and this might not be for some people so I'll explain how the basic breeding mechanic works first of all. So we have the cows going around in a circle here, we have this containment area for what I like to call our cedar cows. These are the ones that we breed before they get separated and the reason that they're rotating in a circle is that we can stand in one position and continually breed them. So over here we have a clock which is attached to a couple of droppers and a hopper and this thing right here will constantly dispense wheat. So you can see in my inventory that I have a piece of wheat and my entire inventory is actually filled up with other blocks. Now this is important because it means when we're standing inside this area here, the only thing we can pick up is wheat and if we don't pick it up it's going to get picked up by the hopper and put back into the dropper. So when we're standing here and this thing is on and the door is closed, you can see that's happening and when we get a full stack of wheat it just means the wheat's going to drop back down into the hopper. So now what we can do is hold down right click in this gap here and we will breed the cows and as they get rotated and go around by the water we will continue to breed all of them that pass by. Now this next bit is the part that is really cheaty. You could sit here for ages and hold down right click maybe when you're watching a movie or something like that but another thing that you can do in this game is you can actually change the controls. So we can change the use item key and make it one of the ones that are on our keyboard and then we could put a weight on the keyboard and hold that key down which is what I like to do. So then what I do is I go AFK for about an hour and when I come back I've got hundreds and hundreds of cows and then I can hit them with a splash potion of harming, use a diamond looting sword, I'll explain that trick in a moment and get tons and tons of leather and beef. Now there is another way of doing this as well, if you hold down right click and press 11 and go into full screen mode and then you let go of right click while you're doing that, you'll trick the game into thinking that you're still holding down the key. Now I can't give you a demonstration of it because if I hit F11 then it's going to interrupt my recording, um, but you can do that as well. So now I'm going to explain how the baby animals get separated from the adults. Now the whole time that we're breeding we're standing here in the middle and we're holding down wheat which means all of the animals are going to try and move towards us. Now this doesn't disrupt the adults from going around in a circle but it does help with the babies being separated because they have a smaller hitbox and on the inside here we have a one block high gap and a one and a half wide block gap as well which means the baby animals are going to try and move towards the center because of the wheat and then they're going to get pushed under here and fall down into this collection area at the bottom. Now this leads into a 2x2 two two pit over here which is held up with some signs and a fence gate as well and that's to suppress the water. Now this next part of the farm, some of the design decisions may seem a little bit strange but I'm sure if I explain it you'll understand why I've made them the way I have. So first of all we have a trapdoor here, this is for throwing splash potions down to the bottom and switching to our looting sword and if you don't know about that trick you can basically uh, throw a splash potion at a cow and when it dies you can switch to your looting sword and the looting effect will be applied to their drops. Now we have signs and fence gates here and the reason that we've used both of them is so I can show you that they have different hitboxes in different positions and this is important because when you're firing your splash potion harming it can actually land on top of the hitbox of a sign and a fence gate as well and if you do that it won't actually hit the baby animals and it will hit the cows around the outside. So on the left hand side here we have another trapdoor. Now I wanted to make this design as lightweight and as friendly as possible and so to avoid using any hoppers or anything like that I think that manual collection is the best way to do this. So we'll drop down like this and we can go down and collect all of those drops. Now bear in mind if you're going to use this for a long time you could end up with three or four hundred cows in this area here and when you kill them all at the same time with a looting sword you're going to create a large amount of drops which will instantly fill up any hoppers that you have down here to automatically collect them. So then even if you have like an item elevator it could be a long time for all of those items to go into the hoppers and some of them could despawn. So this is another reason I think it's a really good idea to do manual collection. Now we've got some chests on the side here, that's so we can pick up the items and instantly put them into these chests if there's a lot of them, but also this acts as a ladder as well. So we have two chests here which means that we can actually stand here and we're slightly further inwards because the hitbox is different 
and then when we hold down space we're actually going to jump up into the water above which makes it easy to get onto this ladder and come all the way back up the top again. So that's the reason that I've gone with that design right there. I actually think it's really good because it's lightweight, all you use is some chests and a ladder compared to tons and tons of hoppers, dispensers and redstone. So of course, before I start the tutorial, I have to give you a demonstration of this. Now this is murdering my PC right now. Let's have a look at those FPS. We are down to 49 and we have 360 odd cows down there, which is a hell of a lot. So I'm going to show you how the trick works. I'm going to throw down a potion. Now I'm going to make sure I don't hit the sign, so I'm going to throw it here. And then I'm going to press 1 as soon as I've right clicked. So now we're going to get the looting effect if any of those die. But of course it's going to take a couple of potions to kill these, so let's do it again. That looked like it killed a few of them, there's a few more to go. And now I think we've killed almost all of them with the looting effect. Yep, that looks like all of them have died. Of course we can just hop straight down this one as well. And it looks like I picked up all of those drops in one go and you can see it's filled up an awful lot of my inventory here. So if we had hoppers, um, each of those can take five so there'd be quite a few items still on the ground and I'm getting a ton of XP from it as well. Um, if you had more than 300 animals down here, let's say you had uh, quite a lot more than that, and I now can't find the chest because there's so much XP, so give me a moment. Okay, I've managed to just about find the chest here. Uh, so as I was saying, if there were a ton more items, then your inventory would instantly be filled up. You could grab the item, hold down shift, double click on another one, and move all of those into there, and you'll instantly pick up all the other ones as well. In fact, I think what I want to do is give you a quick demonstration of that. So now we have about 800 cows down there. I had to change a bunch of Minecraft settings just to get this to run with some FPS as well. So let's do it all over again. We're going to switch to the looting sword each time we throw one of these down. So let's jump down and grab all of these items. You can see there is way more than we can pick up here. But because we got the chests, we can move all of the items into them and we'll instantly pick up the ones that are on the floor. So I've filled up these chests and I've even got some in my inventory as well. But now we can walk up to the chests and when we hold down space we're going to go up into the water and then we can climb back here and get back up to the top. So now it's time to start the tutorial. You're going to need an area of land that is 10 by 10 blocks and it's going to go up into the air by 5 blocks so make sure you have all of that space available. And then in the middle of this area we're going to go down by 2 blocks as well for the containment area. And so in this chest we have all the resources that we need. We have two water buckets here to create a source block because there's eight water sources used in total. Then we have 36 glass blocks which are optional. You can actually go with um, some regular building blocks. Then we have 24 glass panes which can also be iron bars. And then here you can see we almost have three stacks of building blocks and then we'll need some stairs and 25 half slabs as well. We're also going to need a fence gate, two trap doors, a ladder, a wooden door, two chests and 23 signs and then some redstone as well. We'll need one piece of redstone, a redstone torch, a lever, a redstone repeater, a hopper and two droppers. So we need to start off by building the collection pit at the bottom. Now I've marked out where the middle is just because it can be a little bit confusing but there are four blocks between the edges of your area on each side so then you want to dig those down by two blocks and over on this side just dig down another two there and that's where our chests go. So place one on top of the other and then we want to put down our fence gate. Now you can do this however you want. You could have four fence gates but what I like to do is have one and then attach the signs to the side of them. And another little tip for you here, just press escape instead of clicking on done. That speeds things up a little bit there. So now that you've built that, those fence gates and the signs are going to hold back the water and the animals will be able to collect in the middle there. So the next thing we want to do is come around to the edges, go in by one block and place a column like this. So we're going to do that in all four corners and then we're going to place half slabs and glass panes between them. So half slabs going across like this, then on top of those we're going to put our glass panes and we need to do that on all four sides. And then once we've done that we're going to put water in each corner like this and then that is our collection area done. So next we're going to build the water streams for the cows that go around the outside. We're going to start off by going into the middle and placing down three blocks so we can come up to this height here and then we need to build a platform here so notice that I'm leaving a gap of two that's because we want a dropper on this one here that's going to face upwards and then a hopper facing into it and then if we go around to this side 
we're going to put a block here and here and then have four coming across like this so we've left these two here with gaps that's because if we go down the bottom here we need to place another block there and put our ladder on the side of it and if we go up to the top we're going to put a trap door here and another one there now we need to place signs around the outside this can be a little bit tedious but again if you place it down just press escape and then hold down shift when you're placing it on the side of a block that has inventory like that and then when you get to the corners like this what you need to do is place the sign on the edge of that one so it's now occupying this corner space here and so we want to do that going the whole way around and then when you get to this bit here there's going to be a gap so again you just place it on the side like that and then once you've done that you want to go and place a ring of blocks around the outside so these go all the way around all of the corners like this and then when you've done that you want to come into the middle here place down a fence gate and open it in that position then go to this corner and place one here and open that and just go around and do this in all four corners and then once you've got those in place you want to place water source blocks behind them so on each of the corners there's going to be a water source block like this so you might have spotted then I actually missed a sign in the corner but don't worry I've actually put that one back in and it's easy to tell if you've done that because the water won't flow all the way down to the end so now what we want to do is place down a ring of blocks around this area in the middle so that goes on top of the sign that block there and then another one on top of that and then bring this across here now when you get to this bit in front of the hopper what you want to do is place stairs like that and above it a half slab on the higher side there but once those are in place you just want to go around the whole way and make a too high wall and when you're done placing those blocks you want to do the same thing again on the outside just place two blocks high going around the ones that we've already placed and that goes all the way around now this is where I think it's a good idea to put in some glass as well just so from the outside you can see what's going on you'll be able to see the cows going around in a circle uh, but that is literally it we just need to place blocks all the way around the outside and now that that's done we want to come into the middle here and place down a dropper facing towards the hopper that's right there then put down two blocks on this side here we're going to put a block on top of that dropper a piece of redstone behind it and then a block above that a block here and here then we want the repeater facing in this direction and put that on the second setting and then a torch here so you can hear that's making a little clock and you can hear the clicking noise where the dropper would be dispensing items on top of the hopper so now what you want to do is add a lever here so you can turn that off and then put a wooden door like this so you need to stand inside and place it there and that is your farm complete so whenever I make a breeding machine tutorial I always get asked how do you get the animals into there well it's really simple there's no science to it you just make a staircase out of some random blocks I've used dirt to show that it's just a temporary thing and so you get your cows down the bottom here and then you use your wheat to lure them so you just walk up here and the cows are gonna follow you some of them probably will have a little bit of trouble but then if I hop over the edge here and stand here the other cows are going to come along and push them in like that now if you do have trouble getting all of them in one of the things you can do is have a little bit of a water stream behind it maybe put some pressure plates at the back so the water doesn't flow in that direction and then that way when they come towards you the water will push them over the edge if no one else is around to or you could just do it like this so if you like your bacon more than you like your beef you may be wondering does this work with pigs and the answer is yes if you modify it so you can see we've got some pigs in here and they are the same size as a baby cow so they would fit through that gap except I've modified it I've replaced the signs going all the way around the outside with half slabs like this now baby pigs are half a block at all which means they can actually fit underneath those half slabs so that's all you need to do to modify it to make it work with pigs so one last thing I'd like to talk about it is really important that you do a couple of tests beforehand now I would recommend putting about 40 to 50 cedar cows as I like to call them in this area here and then do a test for about 10 minutes and see how many cows you actually get from it because if you do this for a long time you can build up a really large amount of cows and especially if you're doing this on a server it could put a lot of strain on the server and on your computer as well so always make sure that you know how long you're going to be doing this for and roughly how many cows you're going to be getting so that is it for this tutorial I hope you found it useful and if you enjoyed it please do give it a like you know it is always appreciated there is also a map download in the description box in case you get stuck at any point you can refer to this world so hopefully that is also helpful and if you need a lot of wheat or carrots or whatever it is you need for breeding 
and then there is also a link on the screen to the nano farm that is an excellent farming machine that will get you tons of crops really quickly using bone meal so as always thank you very much for watching and i will catch you next time